The Galaxy is serious about changing the research game. It just released its own AI native browser, Comet, to the public for free. After decades of Googling, our habits are changing faster than ever. I've been testing it, and honestly, I love it. It doesn't quite live up to the marketing hype of being your second brain or learning how you think. But here's what actually works. Search comes to you, and your brain starts to offload curiosity. In this video, we'll look at five core capabilities. AI built into the browser, multi-tab intelligence, a genetic actions, deep content understanding, and workspace organization. You will see them come to life through four real-life use cases that completely blow my mind. Let's dive in. Our first use case is finding the best way to send money internationally. Here are the features you'll see in this workflow. So our task here is to find the best bank or service to transfer money from the US to the UK. In my prompt, I mentioned what I need to do, what my criteria are, and I only want to see five options. Okay, so we've got five banks recommended by Perplexity, three bank sites, two comparison sites. I want to make sure the information is accurate, so I'm going to ask it to open the pages that are specifically about transferring money globally. I drop the prompt into the Perplexity Assistant on the right side. It is always available and never blocks your view. And you can ask questions without leaving your current page. While I'm on the Western Union website, you can see in the Assistant window that you can type at and choose a page to mention. That way, you are directly referencing other pages in this session right from the chat. This really shows off Comet's multi-tab awareness. Since it lives right in the browser, it can read across all your open tabs when you ask. Now let's look at a traditional bank. You know places like banks or government pages, they have so many services. Seriously, information overload and I'm not reading all that. With Perplexity Comet, it's much easier. Just open the page, ask for the service you need, and let it handle the rest. You don't have to worry about AI misreading URLs or missing context because you are both looking at the same live page. You can see what it's doing and that makes it easier to ask better questions and trust the answers. All right, I've opened all five banks' pages about transferring money. Time to give the prompt. I added a specific dollar amount so I can get a better sense of the transaction fees. Now watch this carefully. I'm about to ask a comment to do something you just can't do in a regular browser read and interact with five websites at once. That's a cross-tab synthesis plus real-time page interaction. It runs the same tasks across different websites. This is a genetic automation. See what it's doing on the device page. It's changing the currency selectors. Now it's set to dollars and pounds, entering the amount of $5,000 as requested in the prompt. On the side panel, you can see perplexity reasoning in real time. It shows a screenshot of the page and text updates at the same time. Having this level of transparency really matters. When you can see what the AI is doing step by step, it builds trust because you can verify its actions. Five websites total. The whole operation took about six minutes. That's an acceptable speed. Comment isn't just reading static pages. It's actually manipulating website forms like a human would, but across multiple tabs at once. So that's cross-tab comparison. This workflow only works because Comet lives in the browser. Before we move on, this video is actually part one of a two-part series. In this one, we're diving into perplexity Comet. But if you're curious about how AI search is changing how we interact with information across ChatGPT and others, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss the follow-up video. Our second use case is shopping automation for dog food. Here are the features you'll see in this workflow. So I have some tabs open, which include the two types of food for my dog. I'm going to prompt right here and say I wanted to order dog food for me with delivery tomorrow. Here I will add the amount of the food and use this add to reference the specific food tab so Perplexity knows exactly what I want. Here you can see that we are using the feature mentioned in the use case 1 because it's just so convenient. This is really a breakthrough experience in the browser. It's working live, navigating through the product page autonomously and adding the right amount to the chart. It's literally ordering this food for me without any manual clicking. You see in the side window, you can read what it's doing while it's doing the action. After it adds food into the shopping cart, goes through the select address phase and then chooses the delivery options. 
You can pause the action anytime by clicking this small button here, Pause Comment Assistant. This gives you a real sense of control, knowing you can step in, verify, or stop the process at any time. The efficiency gain here is real, and it's not just about speed. Sure, ordering dog food is a simple task, but with Comet, one sentence, order this food for tomorrow delivery, and the browser understands navigate and execute. In the previous use case, we were comparing bank transfer fees across multiple tabs. Imagine having five different dog food options open, comparing ingredients, prices, reviews. You keep these tabs visible, watch the assistant work in real time, and jump into any product page if you want to double check something. You're in control the entire time with seamless access to the page. That's genuinely powerful. Of course, the risks are real, especially when money or digital safety is involved. But since this video is about testing perplexity commenters' features, we won't dive deep into the risks here. For now, this shopping demo shows what's possible, and it's pretty impressive. Our third use case is tab management and auto grouping. So here are the features you'll see in the workflow. Pretty basic stuff that most browsers can do. The real highlight is definitely the auto grouping with a prompt. Let me quickly show you what's possible in comment. Here are two windows open from the previous two use cases. First, let's try to merge tabs within the same windows. We simply type merge tabs in the assistant window from any page and comment groups them together. You can see the merge tabs labeled here with a line showing which tabs are grouped. Now I'm wondering, what if I can merge two windows together? So I try ask that in the prompt. I have two windows open. I want to merge them into one. Okay, Perplexity says currently it's not directly supported through automated tools. Fair enough, that's a limitation. Now I manually move all tabs into one window. We still have the first group named the Merge tabs here. If you right-click a tab, you get this menu showing all the actions you can take, such as rename the group, change the color, move this group to a new window. It's pretty standard tab organization, but it really helps with visual scanning of tab categories. Now, let's talk about Comet's real superpower, auto-grouping. It can read each page, analyze the tab content, and group them into different themes. You can see how this can save you a lot of sorting time. You can just ask directly, group all open tabs based on their themes or topics. It is super cool, and I really love the way how it presents the answer in the sidebar. It shows all the tabs it reads. It gives you a quick overview of the themes it used to categories. This overview is so natural for human to check. It's like getting a bird's eye view of your entire research process, where everything is neatly grouped and easy to navigate. So that's tab management in Comet. Is it revolutionary? No, but here's what makes it different. AI-powered auto-grouping that actually understands content. If you are someone who ends up with 20 plus tabs open, and let's be honest, who isn't? Having AI categories then saves you from manual sorting. Our fourth use case is research synthesis for meeting preparation. Here are the features you'll see in this workflow. I'll mm -hmm. be honest about the failures and the limitations, so you'll know where perplexity's answers for short and where you need to judge the information quality yourself. Let's dive in. You need to prepare for an upcoming meeting to discuss improving office productivity. Your colleague shared a Google Doc with the meeting transcript. First, I need Perplexity to help me summarize the four most common productivity pain points. Analyze this team meeting document. What are the top four productivity pain points mentioned and how many people complain about each? Organize by priority. Let's check the answer. It gave me a table format answer. For each pain point, it lists which colleagues mentioned it. I'm quite satisfied with this answer style clean and organized. Next, I want Perplexity to directly help me find research content. I will specify what I want, YouTube videos, articles, research papers, and I give it a time frame. This is the prompt I will be using. I need to research workplace productivity improvements based on our team's complaints of four areas. Prioritize sources from 2023 to 2025. That include actionable recommendations, not just theory. The response looks great. Videos from Harvard Business Review, BB BBC, all seemingly reliable sources, but what mm -hmm. happened next was really unexpected. It's happened before with perplexity, but never at this scale. So when I try to have all these tabs open for me, every single one of these links is unavailable. Super weird. We all know paywalls can cause problems, 
But that's not what's happening here. But honestly, it does make you wonder, are more websites will block comments from reading their content? I guess we will have to wait and see. Let's just ask for perplexity why the sources aren't working. It gave me an answer. They just sound very AI generated, but it's fine. Let's check out the alternatives. You can see perplexity starts analyzing which sources could substitute. But as I'm watching it work, I'm thinking the quality of these sources isn't as good as before. It went from reliable business focused sources to very personal stuff that's not really office oriented. That's a big shift in quality. I'm just not happy with the final list. Even for a demo, I really can't continue with this quality of research material. So I prepared some resources I found myself. Now in our session, we have Google Doc with meeting, transcript, YouTube videos, articles, Reddit discussion, research paper all over in tabs. Before we synthesize the information, I know comments can read videos, Reddit threads, and articles, but when mm -hmm. I tested it with PDFs, it didn't always work. I tried two PDFs. Comment can read one, but not the other. I directly asked, can you read this paper? The first one answered yes and showed me key findings. But the second one, it just can't be read. I'll just leave that here for your reference. So overall, comment can read most page types but it's not perfect. So if you're doing important research, best practice is double check how it summarizes your sources. Next is to ask it to synthesize all open tabs. My prompt is synthesize all open tabs and organize findings by these four topics. Remember this, I asked it to synthesize all open tabs. Now let's look at the answer. So for some reason, all the information is only from the Google Doc. Why didn't you read any of the YouTube videos or other sources? Look at the answer. It says my previous queries specifically asked for synthesize from open documents, your Google Doc and Notion pages. And I certainly asked to synthesize all open tabs. Well, this is typical AI behavior. It predicts the next word, generates word by word, so it can rationalize anything even if it's not true. Anyone trying to oversell what AI can do, you can show them this clip. Look at it making things up right to my face. But look, it's actually fine. AI is a tool, not your boss. It messes up, you correct it. You both move on. Now I'm going to prompt it to look into all the resources in this session. After I read through the answer, I realized I don't actually want information from the Google Doc, since that's the original meeting notes. So I will run it again, and this time I will say excluding the Google Doc. Now I'm getting answers that only come from the sources I choose, neatly structured into four main sections, and you can even see where each idea comes from in the source tab. This shows how perplexity's tab aware synthesis works. The AI is emerging your private contacts with the public web. So that's research synthesis in Comet. Everything works pretty smoothly, but let's talk about the limitations we ran into in this demo. Dead links from AI search results, PDF reading inconsistency, hallucination when misinterpreting instructions, quality jobs when finding alternatives. This is the reality of working with AI in 2025. It's powerful when it works, but you need to stay alert and verify what it tells you. Like any interaction with AI, it saves you time pulling things together, but you steal the quality control. What makes Comet groundbreaking isn't just the feature, it's the philosophy. The AI doesn't just react, it travels with you. That's AI being useful in a quiet, practical way, an ambient shift in how we interact with the web. 